Meanwhile, Kano State government says 16 more COVID-19 patients were discharged from isolation facilities after they tested negative to the virus twice. Malam Mohamed Gerba, the State Commissioner for Information, made the disclosure in a statement on Thursday in Kano. Mohamed disclosed that this brings the total number of discharged patients in the state to 22. Joining us from UK to discuss these new cases, it's a medical practitioner and healthcare analyst, Dr. Peter Idagu. Good morning, Dr. Peter, and thank you for joining us. Uh, good morning. And how are you doing this Thanks morning, well. doctor? Yeah, I'm doing very well. Good to know. Nigeria in the last 24 hours recorded 381 new cases. Can you please give us insight into what this implies? Um, it shows certainly that an increase in community spread um, it is inconsistent with um, what has been projected okay, uh, in terms of community spread in Nigeria. But however, it also shows that there's an increased efficiency in case finding by the NCDC. It also shows that there's more compliance of the people with the strategies of the NCDC in terms of um, testing and contact tracing. Um, it also implies that um, there's more work actually for the health workers because the more the cases you have, okay, the more work there is for those who have been earmarked to take care of these patients in the isolation centers. As, as a matter of urgency, what should the health authorities consider as priorities in tackling this menace? Um, while there are priorities, I think there's um, actually going to be a complex um, interplay of um, interventions that government at both federal and state level should employ. Uh, most important of these should be taking pragmatic decisions, actually, that are tailored to the peculiarities of the Nigerian people. Okay, not just adopting what you find um, maybe in Europe or in America and all that. We should look at the peculiarities of our people in taking decisions that are tailored to um, manage the community spread. Um, we should also try to focus on discouraging the spread of fake and misleading news. Because um, if it affects the response of the populace to the strategies of the NCDC, it will all be in futility if the people do not comply. Okay. I also think that um, health authorities and the government in general should form partnerships with religious bodies okay, in terms of information dissemination, helping people to comply with instructions, um, partnering with NGOs as well to help in places where the health system are weak. Like if you look at the numbers that you display today, you find out that there's uh, an ongoing increase in the spread of the coronavirus, especially in the north. Now, the North, we know, have um, the lowest in terms of um, the, the, the numbers of health workers who are domiciled there and working in the populations. So if you have increased spread there, of course, it, at some point, it will overwhelm the, the hands you have. So as much, as much as possible, NGOs, religious bodies, health organizations that are not necessarily government, the government should reach out to them and find ways of helping of, of them helping and partnering in this, in this fight against the coronavirus. Doctor, let's take a look at the figures. Lagos is leading yeah. with 183 cases, followed by Kano with 55 cases. What are the specific yeah. recommendations for these two states that are now the epicenters of COVID-19 in Nigeria? Um, I think um, Lagos and Kano, um, considering their population, you somehow comparatively will expect that they would have higher numbers so long as they have um, they have recorded their, their first case. Okay, so with community um, spread, you you actually expect that. Now, for for these two states, I think that um, there should be an objective review and strengthening of the strategies that they have used so far, and that would include uh, first of all allaying anxiety, because if the people because of these numbers seem to withdraw from the NCDC. I still emphasize this point of cooperation. Okay, if anxiety is not allayed, people will not cooperate. And then you would um, perhaps be deceived into seeing that the numbers will reduce over time, whereas the infection is still in the population. Then they should encourage social distancing. Okay, like Lagos, um, I think Kano should as well make face masks. Okay, uh, promote the use of face masks. If possible, make it compulsory or put incentives in whatever way for people who use the face mask. Then they should also close borders very strictly, 
Okay, because as the numbers increase in Lagos or in Kano, the neighboring states are also at risk. So let's try as much as possible to see how we can contain the increased numbers in these states within the states, isolate them from the population, reduce community spread, and make sure it does not go out of the state. And then finally for um, Lagos and Kano, I think as well that the increased number also tells us, considering what we call the iceberg phenomenon, that there are possible hidden cases in the population. So they should increase testing as well, okay? Testing per day, identifying more cases, isolating them, and keeping the population safe. All right, two states of Lagos and Ogun State and the Federal Capital Territory on Monday experience, um, came into the face of the ease down of the lockdown as imposed by the federal government. And we all saw the craziness this brought into the city um, as people climb up to different places, especially the bank, the bank sector, the banking halls to, for transactions. Um, and the issue of social distancing was not being, was not being um, maintained in those circumstances. Would you agree with the extension of a lockdown as being clamored for by some Nigerians to avoid a second wave of COVID-19? Um, ideally, um, I would say yes, okay, um, in terms of extension of lockdown from a purely public health perspective, okay, because social distancing, the most effective way of social distancing is first of all to, to, to reduce the contact at all costs, and I think that's what lockdown intends to do. That's internal lockdown specifically. Okay, now um, you also want to consider the economic effect of this on the average man, especially um, with the economic peculiarities of Nigeria, where people have to access a lot of things, including food, including healthcare, from their pocket. So it's actually not very easy. So I think that um, uh, we should, as much as possible, uh, people who should not be out, especially those who are at risk, those who have pre-existing medical conditions, those who are of, of um, maybe who are aged, okay, the elderly, as much as possible, should reduce how much they come out into the public. Now, we have also promoted the, talk, the, the, the issue of face masks. Okay, if possible, that for people or states that are trying to reduce... Uh, uh, the effect of the lockdown on the population, they should also try to see how they can enforce the use of face masks. Because if you don't have contact with the droplets of it from infected people, of course, you will definitely Dr. reduce Peter, the spread. I need to interject here, Dr. Peter. Finally, um, let me just interject here. This is it. The easing of the lockdown has brought almost all Lagosians out to the streets. Yes, we're seeing yeah. face masks being worn. But my question is still on social distancing, where you have people in queues, trying to get into the departmental stores, trying to get into the banks, and people in the same office workspace, how much effective, how much of social distancing can one do? And are there alternatives at this point in time? Because people on the street, is business as usual now. Yeah, social distancing is, to be honest with you, Benny, is very difficult in the setting of um, a place like Nigeria, yeah. okay? Of course, you know how, how crowded you have very public spaces, especially Lagos, where you have the population that troops out every day so long as um, movement is allowed. It is very difficult. It's almost non-practicable. And that's why the use of face masks tends to protect each individual. If everybody uses face masks, of course, and everybody maintains very good hand washing, okay, and reduce contact of their hands with their face, I can assure you that even with ineffective um, uh, uh, or poorly effective social distancing, you will have a very good control of the spread in such populations. Dr. Peter Dago, it's been a pleasure having you join us on News on the Hour and for your contribution. Thank you very much.